All right, here we are back at part two. Uh, I pretty much just saved the video and just continued right on. So for me, it's only been a couple of minutes. And if you're watching this in sequence, it'd be the same for you. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is, I think, after just giving them a once over just to see where I'm at, I think I'm ready for my next level which is subdivide 2.4 it's going to take a second, you can see oh, 3.26 million polygons that's a lot of millions and now what I'm going to do is just go through and let's undo that, get a bigger brush and just kind of once over all of these I think this is going to be my final resolution. If I go higher than this, I'm looking at about 15 or so million polygons, 12 to 15. Um, and my computer's not going to handle that. I can do it, but it doesn't uh, doesn't make for for a lot of fun, to be honest with you because it's laggy and whatnot, I really need a better better processor video card's good, I'm running a 660 Ti um, which I actually like it, it's not the top of the line anymore but it was when I got it several months ago uh, I'm only running 8 gigs of RAM, I really should be running 16 to 24 and I'm only running a quad 3 gigahertz CPU, however it's it's a good quality one but definitely no i7 Haswell or anything uh, anything new you can see I don't have any real issues with my sculpt speeds here um, if your computer is really dumpy, uh, you, you may want to hide geometry to make things better. Like for instance, just hold V and say, okay, I want to... You can see that it really lags when I go to do this because it's selecting so many polygons. And then you just, once you have them selected, you just hit H. And hiding, unhiding down at the bottom there, you can see, and then it hides it. It will run a little bit better. Uh, it's not displaying as much. But you got to be careful. You don't want to sculpt anywhere near here, because uh, if you sculpt here and then unhide, you can see what you get. Okay. Got to undo that so it hides again, and then undo that sculpt. It will uh, when you hide stuff, it will actually not sculpt on it, which I think is. is better. Alright, let's see what I can do here. A little bit of a smaller brush and make a nice join there. Not all of the wrinkles that I have generated here are necessarily super realistic or anything. Like I said, I don't use reference. I don't even uh, I don't even go check later. I just go with what my gut says and what my hands do. Sometimes I let the hands do the talking. So I'm just kind of going over everything further sharpening some of these crease points using a combination of control and not control to to dip in and uh, bulge out let's, let's see if we can add another wrinkle here I 
in case I didn't mention it, B uh, sizes your brush. You wanna you wanna make heavy use of that. It's the number one thing you wanna basically be constantly adjusting. No one brush size will rule them all. That is for sure. I'm just gonna unhide everything. I don't really have issues with the performance right now. Alright, let's try to get some of these overlapped. I'm not too worried about his pits. Because you're not going to really see that too much. split there. And I'll shrink it down just a little bit more and then join them and then I'll run a little bit of a smooth on it. Let's get a wrinkle inside that dip there. I do want a little bit more chaos near the seam, near the mirror point. in order to draw attention away from the fact that it is mirrored. Um, there isn't a lot of stuff that's mirrored in, in the real world, at least in organics. Uh, even though it may be very, very symmetrical, it will not be, usually not be 100%. I use the word mathematically a lot, because I think it's is the best term for that kind of thing. Mathematically symmetrical or mathematically identical. Sometimes you will get lost on what's bulging and what's not bulging. Um, and the way to pretty much pick that back up with your eye is just to you know, spin the model a little bit give it a couple turns and then your eye will catch back up a little bit more chaos up at the uh, sleeve part it's gonna be oops I don't even know what I did Sometimes if you hit uh, like right mouse and uh, while you're holding control, it'll give you some pop-up windows and things like that, and and then just arbitrarily selects some kind of random command on you. Just try to avoid hitting the that combo of keys. That's all I can really advise on that. Happens to me quite a bit. I usually don't know what happened. one more wrinkle split there. You can see right here that I'm going to get a uh, normal map 
error. I'm going to get a little star point. And there's really nothing I can do about it because of the fact that I'm not quadded out. And even when you are quadded, when you um, go from areas of, say, six, six segments to five, and you you do the proper quad split to get that separation, you know, to get that, that join correct, you'll get those stars in there too. Um, like when the flow changes directions. And sometimes they're bad. Like sometimes they're so bad that you're upset about it, you know, that's the best way to put it. Piss you off. But um for the most part you can uh just you can paint them out and by that I just mean like blur it in the normal map, you know. And that usually does it. Maybe you need to clone some blank blank areas or something like that, but it's it's really not something that you can't totally combat later on. I mean, to be honest, I could be painting all of these wrinkles in the bump map if I really wanted to, but I I don't have access to this cool brush features and things like that, and it's just a lot easier to do it here. It's really hard to blur and blend these kinds of details later. But errors and small spots uh, that that can be pretty easily fixed. I'm only smoothing there to get rid of the uh, as much of that faceting as I possibly can. All right, let's do his collar here. It is just a T-shirt. No real uh, major. Didn't sculpt there for some reason. No major details necessary here. I'll add a couple of simulated folds. But really, all I want to do is actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and hide that neck. So I'm just giving myself kind of an edge by holding control. And I'll smooth that out a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of make it like it's segmented like this. A couple of short ones, long ones. This kind of operation here is what will give you tired. I already feel my hand going numb. And I'm actually running out of space a little bit, but it's okay. I really need a better uh, tablet. Mine is a Sapphire 3. It's like 15,000 years old. Cavemen were using this thing. And it's somewhat run in the course of its life. The uh, tip of the pen is completely worn out. It looks like a pencil now. It's all angled at the top. The vinyl part or the soft plastic tip is... Oops, I'll cross that over. It's, it's pretty much dying. It feels grainy and crunchy when I sculpt. If, if I go over here and you can hear it, watch, listen. Wait, where is it? There it is. It's not smooth anymore. So, I really would love to get myself a Cintiq, but I would upgrade my computer before I spent that kind of money. But you need at least some money to do any of that first. I don't have any. So, over here, it's getting a little low res. So I'm going to need to do a little bit more extensive smoothing. A bulge there I don't like. And then I'll 
I'll turn it around a little bit there. Continue that one, and then that one, and then continue this one. Again, from each peak of the Y shape here, just call it a Y because that's basically what it is. You want to travel your brush, oops, travel your brush along as much of the full length as possible. And if you don't go down the full length, you want to trail off your pressure as smoothly as you can in order not to create bulges. Now in this spot, I'm actually going to leave that dip there. A lot of times you might be tempted to fill it in with another wrinkle, you know, but it's, it's okay to have under dips, and I don't have a lot of it going on. I probably could use a lot more of it overall. But I'm not going to redesign it. If I uh, if I saved this file and started new and I started this again, uh, it's absolutely 100% guaranteed that all of these wrinkles and whatnot, they're all going to be 100% different. I would come out probably with a completely different flow pattern. So uh, basically what I'm saying is if you don't like it, you can start over. We're not that invested in time. We are, but not not overly invested. The legs, I'm actually quite quite satisfied with that shape. I don't really want more than that. Uh, I think the arms could maybe use a little bit of help defining that muscle there. And let's go down this line just a hair and then smooth it out. Keep in mind that when you um, when you increase your resolution on your model that your smoothing brush gets exponentially less effective. So in order to really tone down shapes you pretty much have to go down a couple sub -Ds. Like if I wanted to smooth out these wrinkles here I would be smoothing here for hours, literally, but if I just step down a couple sub D's, I could wipe them out pretty quick. This is less vertices to average. Even a huge brush isn't going to do it. Okay, see that? But what I do want to do is, let's see, let me get rid of that under dip there. Another thing that you can do is actually just use a really large bulge brush and it does bulge geometry based on its average to normal. You can see what's going on here. I can make myself a Michelin man. Obviously I'm not keeping that because that would be beyond broken. But if you wanted to exaggerate some of the wrinkles you could using a bulge brush. The smaller the brush the more obviously isolated it becomes and actually the more influence that you get on it. If I go really big you can see that it's much less overall noticeable. Just positives and negatives actually about that brush. Bulge brush is a very handy one. The wax tool is very handy too. Uh, it's much better for um, I'd say hard surface and organics in terms of um, say like building muscle but to be honest in that case I tend to still go with bulge and ooh, and um, and the wrinkle brush Okay, see right here where the geometry is tightening up my pressure has to decrease in order to avoid uh, overly pinching and sculpting here. Just segmenting the tail some. I think for the hands I may use a little bit of the wax tool. 
but even there I still prefer the bulge brush because wax tool will actually um, change the underlining form whereas the bulge tool will only move the underlining form I don't know if that makes sense hopefully it makes sense when I show it here which I'm about to move on to in just a split second here alright so let's explore the difference between wax and bulge we'll go with the knuckles here if I use a really big wax tool and I just go real hard you can see that I get something that is like what the hell just happened it's like averaging at the same time as building so it's lumping geometry on now the wax tool can actually be a little tricky because it's a really weird balance notice how I'm making like a f basically a flat peak there if I cross here you can see that it it actually joined it at the same time if I come in with the bulge tool you can see a much different result let me get a bigger brush here see how I'm just literally I'm only moving these on their their already existing normals I'm not changing the normals or averaging the normals in fact I don't believe that the normal angles change at all using the bulge brush but I could be wrong about that and you see that these are insanely exaggerated but again the original model is not going to be like that this is just creating those highlights now let's try the wax tool to make yeah, see I don't think it's really gonna gonna work for this case it's flattening it out so the in this case the bulge tool is giving me much better results I used to use the wax tool for like everything like literally everything and I loved it but now I kinda hate it as I find some other brushes are uh, becoming handier and handier now I need to make a really long but steady stroke here for this bone which is why I'm turning on steady stroke you notice he's got very long hands that's just just a feature of being a rat your human characters will not definitely not want to replicate that unless you're doing like a crazy old boogeyman monster I have to, to go into my idea about a boogeyman game but I'm not going to I don't want to ruin the surprise and the biggest surprise of that is this is not going to be done for the next 25 years at least because I haven't even started on it but when it's done it's going to change the universe actually I'm going to get arrested when it's done and that being part of the point alright let's Let's give him a bit of a wrist bone there, which is kind of a double double bone. And let's define a bit of tendoning and then terminate it by blurring it some. Alright. big of a brush huh. too small of a brush okay the wax tool might be what's gonna save me here need to stay very light I 
probably need a little bit more spacing. We'll actually tone the brush down. There we go. Now I can get a little bit better on my pressure. All right, and now let's create thumb web. I'm going to hold control with the sculpt tool. So it builds it out. And skip a step. Skip a step and then blur that out. Alright, for the tops of the knuckles, we're going to do too many of these wrinkles, but they're important. The flow for these, for the most part, is just be one kind of going perfectly horizontal and then if you did one starting from the top that's slightly like oval shaped and then do another one from the other side that that pretty much covers it um, and you notice that it doesn't this one doesn't continue all the way I'll show you like one that does continue all the way and it just doesn't look as good to me. I mean, I don't think it doesn't look a lot different, but I tend to only use three lines. This is more more of a uh, comic style cartoony detail. Uh, in reality, there's actually quite a few more, and I'll do that on that finger, on that middle knuckle. And there's no there's almost literally no rhyme or reason except that that you want them to from the dead center of the knuckle you kinda want them to be uh, fanning out and then around and they can cross over like this where they hit each other um, if it doesn't look like that on your hand I'm sure you can find somebody where it does look like that and really these back ones don't actually have that so you just kind of avoid that. All right, let's go with the bulge again, and let's, let's get our steady stroke. But I'm going to increase my distance because I want these lines to be very controlled and straight. So you can see I've got double the distance before it starts actually putting down the paint. I need to. I need it that small, but I definitely don't want that much uh, strength. These actually don't exactly come from the same, they're not fanning out from the exact same point like that. They're actually fanning out from right next to each other like that, okay? So let's try to control that. I'll start this one a little bit to the left, just give myself more room. And then right next to it, just kind of aim and I'm basically breaking what I had done before but what I did before was much less controlled and I wasn't paying as much attention as I am trying to do now so we go like that and then if I hold control I can make the dip between them a little bit more pronounced and then I'm just going to kind of smooth everything over and that'll look okay. Let's fatten up the palm. Oop, I don't need this steady stroke anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and stay with a with the one strength here. And now let's go in and just kind of create his. prediction lines or whatever you want to call it. I don't buy any of that crap. What a total load. Magic, ghosts, 
dragons, all that stuff. It's all, it's all total load. ESP, telepathy, all that. If that stuff existed, it would be. It wouldn't be on these idiot shows. I don't even know why I'm on this tangent, but I am. Because of the palm lines, but all that gypsy thing is. I don't care who claims, oh no, it's true, there. I seen it, you didn't see a ghost. You didn't see nothing. Liar. If if it was true, why isn't it on the real news? Like seriously, why isn't it ever on the real news? UFOs, right? Oh, it is on the real news. No, it's not. And it's always speculation, and it's always just taking some other person's word for something. When I see proof, I'll change my tune. I will. I'm not unreasonable. But I guarantee you, I never will. Nobody will ever prove any of it. Because if it really existed, really, and re really, 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 like for real, there would be proof. Somebody would get it. That's why it's all just one huge, gigantic, steaming pile of load. Load of carp. So, I don't even know why I call those prediction lines. They're just wrinkles in his hands because of the way that the hands fold. Alright, let's re-explore. I had to pause the video because I got uh, I got called for a second and I do have to run to eat the dinners and uh, but I'm not going to stop this part. I'm just going to pause it and then come back when I'm done. But yeah. If you hate me because I said that ghosts aren't real um, I'm actually happy about that. To be perfectly honest with you. I don't hate you if you think they're real. But that's only just because I really don't care. I want them to be. Don't get me wrong. I really do. I think it would be cool. It'd be fun if the world wasn't just logical and plain and and all that. There was magic. Cause I, I'd like to be a, I'd like to I'd like to be able to fly. I'll be perfectly honest with everybody. If somebody can tell me how I can will myself to leave the ground for more than a single second or so and survive it. That's a big part of it, please. I'd like to survive it. Um if you have that spell or a book or a formula or whatever it is. I would appreciate that information. And in return I will I guess I'll just fly away and cackle. Cackle in an extreme amount of joy. There's only one creature on this planet that I'm jealous of and that is every single bird. Except chickens I guess because they suck. They're just they're just snacks. I mean, that's got to be the worst, right? If your lot in life, your purpose in the universe is a snack for something else, I mean, how lame is that? I suppose we are too, right? I mean, you go into the ocean and you're nothing but a morsel for some very sharp tooth thing that's going to come after you. But we have the uh, ability to say, hey, wait a minute. If I go in there, I will be a snack. So I'm, I'm going to choose otherwise. I'm just gonna say no. I don't want to. I don't want to get eaten by something like a thing. And we we are afforded that luxury because we have that analytical 
thinking ability that other creatures don't have. It's like even dogs, who are pretty basically my favorite creature on the planet. They're idiots. I mean, they're idiots. You know, they'll they'll run up to a a bear and bark at it. You know, hey 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 hey, what are you doing here, big bear? And then the bear's just gonna eat them. I mean, maybe a bull mastiff can hang with a bear, but I know my little pug won't. But he's stupid. He'll go after it. I don't know if I've ever trailed off on a bigger tangent in my life, but there's really nothing going on here to say other than I'm just kind of cleaning it up with the sculpt tool and the wonderful uh, wrinkle brush here. Because to be honest with you, I'm actually pretty much done with the sculpt. So I said I wasn't going to stop this part, but I am going to stop this part because people are waiting for me to go eat. And um, when I come back, I will show everybody how to capture this normal map. And then I'll sh show a couple of examples of what we're looking at here. And we'll get it in the UK and we'll see what's going on. And then we will uh, pretty much paint it up and I'll show how to get uh, like some, some text to, to bleed across you know, both sides of the, of the model. So let me unhide the neck there. And I will stop this part and I will be back for part three.